Hello and welcome to episode 39. So for today, it's just going to be a solo episode. Both Joe and I are a bit busy, but nonetheless, I'm super excited. Today, I'm going to be talking about self-identity. And this is kind of a topic that's been heavy on my heart. I thought I'd just come on here and share some of my thoughts and what I've been dealing with, ways to get over it, and all that fun stuff. So let's get right into it. The first topic that I have for you guys is people-pleasing. This is something that hits home for me, might hit deep a little bit for you guys as well. Um, If you're like me, you might have a lot to unpack in this topic. (laughs) I feel as though people pleasers have a lack or loss of self-identity. I know this is something, as I stated before, that I'm still working on and improving on myself. Before I was, you know, putting together an outline for this uh, video, I saw this TikTok which TikTok to me is kind of like another form of Google at this point. I feel as though my algorithm is set to a lot of like self-help videos at the moment. I'm not sure why, but I saw this TikTok that said, people pleasing is to suppress your needs to make others comfortable. And this really hit home for me. So this is why I wanted to come and share this topic today. I feel as though that, you know, struggling with people pleasing i'm not sure if there's a more like broader you know psychological term for this but i'm just gonna say people pleasing so (laughs) i don't know this is something that like i said before is very heavy on my heart you know suppressing my needs because i feel the need to make everybody comfortable i struggle with this a lot i'm getting better and i'm setting some personal boundaries which i'm definitely going to get into later I feel like I was living for others, such as my friends, whether it be romantic relationships, family, all of that fun stuff. And it's really hard. I feel like a lot of advice I've heard from people is like, oh, don't let people walk all over you. Oh, stop people pleasing. But it's really not that simple. I mean, a lot of people do experience this. I feel like this could be a universal experience of people pleasing as well. Or maybe if you don't ha- deal with it too often, you might have been in a situation where you have dealt with it. It's just one of those things where so many people interpret it differently. So many people experience differently, but it is this underlying universal feeling of people pleasing. It's a this concept that has been drilled into my head, not by anybody in specific, not through any action specifically. It's just something that I have dealt with that if everybody is uncomfortable, it's going to make me super uncomfortable. So I try to make sure that everybody's happy to avoid that, but then I end up becoming uncomfortable. So it feels like a lot of lose situations for me, like win-lose situations. It's not that I'm trying to be heroic and let everybody be super happy over me. It's just I I have this feeling where I need to take on that role. It's my responsibility. Not that anybody's telling me that I need to do that. It's just this underlying feeling that I have. And I'm sure a lot of you guys might have this feeling as well if you're listening to this episode. And it's just one of those things where you can't just be told, oh, don't let people walk all over you. I don't feel as though I do that. And sometimes it kind of it hurts to hear that I'm like oh shit you know makes me realize some things but I just I don't feel as though that I'm like doing that I just have this underlying feeling where I have to take over and I have to do everything because I have to have my finger on all these like little aspects and I have to you know like my hands on it I best (laughs) I think that's a better way of saying it but I have to be the one to control the situations so I don't know it's very unhealthy and craving not the validation but just craving that feeling of control i think goes back into people pleasing controlling everybody's you know emotions in a way making sure everybody's comfortable and then you are uncomfortable is very unhealthy and it's kind of toxic but not in a negative way i would say and it's just something that i feel like i want to work on and like i was saying before a big way I feel to help this is setting some personal boundaries, man. So moving on to the second topic that I have is ways to help self-identity. So if you are struggling with finding your identity or you struggle with people-pleasing, like we talked about before, 
a really good way to take this seriously is to start by outlining your boundaries. Outlining things that you feel comfortable with or things you feel uncomfortable with. And as, I guess, silly as this might sound, journaling these things can really help you visualize a little bit better of your needs and make it more real. Because if you're just thinking of these things, it might be just floating kind of like a dream. But when you write it down, it starts to become real, raw, authentic, all of that stuff. So that's what I've been trying to do. I try to write down things that I feel uncomfortable with. A really good example could be, um, let's say your friends are going out for dinner and you're just feeling like super tired. You just want to stay at home. Maybe the people pleaser self and me personally would be like, damn, I need to go. I need to make sure all my friends are having a good time. I need to plan where we're going to go eat. I need to plan the Ubers, you know, that type of shit. But if I'm too tired to go and I already know my friends are going to go have fun or whatnot, I don't need to be that person. I don't need to go if I'm at home and I just want to sit my happy ass at home, do my little whatever routine I want to do and just say no, like in a respectful manner, like, nah, thanks for the invite, but I kind of want to stay at home. Like, that's a great way to approach it. And I feel this starts, you know, on working on yourself. The best way to start would start journaling these ideas. I don't feel comfortable going out when I don't want to. That's a good thing you could write down and start implementing that into your daily routine. I say this often. Of course, it's easier said than done. This thing you know, uh, working on self-identity isn't going to change overnight. It's not something that you can change, like, even in a week, man. So, it's just something you have to start working on now. Another way to handle um, this, like I was saying before, those conversations, handling conflict, learning to have these uncomfortable and vulnerable talks and setting boundaries with people. So, it's one thing to start writing them and it's one thing to start implementing them. Another example could be if your coworkers are talking about something that you're not cool with, be like, damn, I know in my journal I wrote, I don't like talking about, you know, insert subject here, whatever. <laughs> so you can start implementing, be like, oh, yeah, I don't feel comfortable talking about this. Can we talk about something else? It's really that simple. If you worked with some coworkers and they aren't respecting those boundaries, that's when you can even take it to the higher level. That's not even some snitching shit. That's just making sure that you are in a comfortable and safe environment. So, man, those are super hard conversations to have at first. And I feel like it's only going to get better with time. Hang in there. You got this. It's just one of those things where you have to be selfish. Selfish. I can't even speak today. You have to be selfish about these things because you will not get over these issues if you aren't starting to, you know, make people aware of your boundaries, which is super important. So overall, journaling is a really, really, really good way to start, especially if you deal with people pleasing. And it's just kind of foundational ways to take, you know, matters into your own hand with all of this. There's a lot of different resources out there to help out. Vulnerability is super important. It's not a weakness. It's something that you need to you know, admire and be okay with. So, that being said, moving on to the third topic that I have for this episode is social media. I felt like this is a super crucial and important topic to talk about, that it has its own topic. So, we live in a world of overconsumption. We live in a world where I can go on TikTok and find literally thousands of videos about any subject and thousands of people's opinions on said so subject. Sometimes our brains struggle with differentiating between things that are reality and things that aren't. An example that I feel like I have dealt with, I guess, is like scary movies. Let's say even just like little things. Like let's say somebody stubs their toe in a movie. I feel that pain and I'm sure a lot of you guys do. I'm not even sure if this is like scientifically proven or whatnot, but I do feel as though our brains have this, you know, not issue, but this thing where we feel the pain that's inflicted on others like on the screen because we can't feel the difference between that. And this kind of ties into social media where we see all of these ideas that aren't our own, but our brain is just morphing them into our ideas. 
whether that be somebody's persona online, the lifestyle they're living, all of these identities, we're just, you know, like sponges soaking it up and making it our own. I feel as though social media is really good for getting some inspiration or finding people and sharing things that you may love, but it's also a really toxic way to start morphing into people who you are not. I'm definitely a fan of micro trends. I can't lie. I'm a friend of trends. I'm a fan or fan, sorry. I'm a fan of all of these things. I'm not trying to hate on it because I've seen quite a lot of videos who are like, fuck this aesthetic, fuck that. And it's just like, oh, whoa. Like, you know, people are going to like what they're going to like. This is our day and age where this is just a thing that's happening. Trends have happened for years. It's not like this is something that just is brought up because of social, social media. So I'm not trying to say that at all. I feel personally like making it your whole personality is when it can get out of hand when you're trying to do it for other people if you genuinely feel or act a certain way that's cool but when you're doing it to please other people or to fit into all of these standards that's when it becomes a little toxic and that's when it becomes a little bit harder to deal with because you might do this for people pleasing or because you have a lack or loss of self-identity, that's when it becomes really harmful for not only like you, your mental health, but possibly others. And it's really important to kind of address these things and realize like, you know, damn, this is not okay. So again, not hating on micro trends. I'm all for these little like, oh, coastal cowgirl, clean girl aesthetic. I, I like them. I, I think it's cool and good way to get inspiration if that's the type of fashion or makeup or whatnot you like, but there are times it can get out of hand. Anyways, this is all that I had for this episode. I wanted to keep it kind of short and sweet today, just talking about self-identity. Next week, Joe and I are going to have another video or sorry episode out for you guys and we're really excited to do a joint episode again but yeah hope you guys have had a wonderful week enjoy this episode enjoy your lovely tuesday have a great day